What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I'll be showing you how to optimize EA Sports WRC for the best possible performance while still keeping the game looking as good as possible. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get even more performance from your PC. This video is specifically going to focus on the in-game options, so that's where we'll start. Immediately in-game, you'll notice that it has fantastic ultra-wide support, and the UI is perfectly centered at 16 by 9, so recordings look great even if you choose to play ultra-wide, though this won't be most people of course. For now, I'll head into Options and Extras, then we'll start on the Basic Graphics tab. Over here, we'll start by setting our resolution to match our display, and in my case, I'm recording at normal 16 by 9 2K, so that's what I'll set it to here. There we go. This resolution should match your native resolution display, as in the one that it says on the box. That way, you're not rendering too many pixels or too few pixels, making it waste extra performance or having it needlessly blurry. We can adjust things later on, but for now, just make sure it matches your display. 4K, set it to 4K, 2K, 2K, 1080, 1080, etc. Display mode should absolutely be set to full screen for the best performance and input latency, and anti-aliasing is an option that we can turn between low and cinematic. Unfortunately, we can't turn this off entirely, as with any kind of upscaler, whether it's DLSS, FSR, or TAA, you don't need anti-aliasing pretty much at all, as upscaling gets rid of jagged edges anyways. For now, I'll set this down to low. Even if you're not going to use an upscaler, I'd still recommend you have anti-aliasing all the way down unless you're really annoyed by jagged edges, as this will make the screen a little bit more blurry and take quite a bit of performance. V-Sync should definitely be turned off unless the top and bottom half of your monitor seem to be tearing apart. You can enable it in that case, otherwise keep it off for better input latency. Anisotropic filtering filters the textures on your graphics card, making them look a little bit better, and it's pretty much a free option that you can have cranked all the way up to 16 on modern graphics cards. You can lower it if you please, but for the most part, it shouldn't have too much of a performance impact. Upscaler, this is pretty important in this game. We can set it to off to run at native resolution, and that's that, or we can use temporal, but preferably use AMD Fine Fidelity FX, otherwise known as FSR, to get way more performance simply by rendering at a lower resolution, possibly automatically, and scaling it up using AI magic and a bit of sharpening. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card with DLSS support, choose DLSS here. For both of these options, you'll notice an upscale quality. Essentially, the more to the quality side we have this, the less difference there is between the actual resolution and our native resolution. If we push this more to the performance side, it'll render the game in a much smaller window, making AI work a lot harder to bring our native picture quality back, so you'll notice weird ghosting artifacts and things like that. I'd recommend starting at quality and pretty much not going any lower unless you really need extra performance. I would recommend having a DLSS or FSR enabled, even temporal upscaling, as this game can really do with a bit of upscaling to smooth out some weird edges and lighting effects. We'll get there in just a bit. Upscaler quality for DLSS, you can choose on here in order to get it to automatically choose and adjust a quality for the upscaler as you're playing. This may be a bit weird possibly jarring at times, especially when you drop tons of FPS, so rather have it at a stable FPS count by having this disabled and choosing an option yourself manually. Upscaler sharpness is entirely your preference. Usually you'll leave this in the upper 60s, possibly 70s, to keep the game nice and sharp, but it is your preference. Dynamic resolution is an option you can have on if you have Fidelity FX or Temporal Anti-Aliasing selected, but you can change the resolution automatically as you play between a minimum and a maximum percentage of your actual resolution all the way at the very top. This instead skips over the upscaler quality and allows you to dial in this in a much more controlled fashion. DLSS doesn't have this option, we only have the presets here and that's it, whereas the other ones have presets and the option to more finely control it. Cool. We'll head back here, then across to advanced graphics. In here we can get tons of extra performance for our system. Obviously, first of all, you'll want to start it off with however good you think your graphics card slash system are. If you have a powerful system, choose ultra and work your way down, medium, choose medium, or low end, choose ultra low and work your way up for a few options. Essentially, there's a few options we'll want to drop. Shadows aren't super important in this game as it's a racing game, but you may consider it a little bit more cinematic than a first person shooter. If you like crispier shadows, set this to medium, possibly high, though if you push it any higher, you'll notice a severe drop in FPS. Fog, I'd recommend having on as it immerses you more in this game, but if you're clawing for extra FPS, you can turn this off. Particles, I haven't noticed too much of a difference between medium and ultra. Medium seems good enough, so that's probably where I'll leave it at highest. 
weather. I would assume that this mostly has to do with rain dropping on your screen and things like that. You'd usually want higher qualities for this, but some certain situations and weather systems in game could cost your system a lot more performance wise compared to just a clear sunny day. If you notice a huge amount of performance dropping on snowy or rainy maps, I'd recommend coming back and turning down the weather option. High is probably more than good enough. Then crowd. The crowd seems pretty low quality in this game to say the least, and I would assume this option has some sort of control over the density of how many people there are in different crowd areas. Ultimately, it's not that important. They don't really do much and they're not exactly super high quality models. So high or ultra is good enough and you can leave it there. Ground cover. This one I'd highly recommend having to a higher option as it'll make the ground look a lot better in game, especially if you have more VRAM in your system. If you have probably about four gigabytes of VRAM or anything less, choose low, possibly medium. If you have six gigs, choose high and anything more than six gigs of VRAM, choose ultra. Trees, there's not too much of a difference between these ultimately in performance medium high and ultra look all pretty much about the same with a small performance change between them i'd recommend high here then dynamic objects I would assume this has to do with things moving around in the scene. There's not a ton of these, so there's probably not too much of a reason to have this set higher or lower. It shouldn't really matter. I'd recommend setting this to high, possibly medium. Then car reflections. Reflections usually cost quite a bit in performance, and high is as high as I would go here unless you're running a super high-end system. You can set this to medium for medium-end systems and low slash ultra-low for much lower-powered systems, as this is going to be one of the more expensive options while you're playing the game. If you want a better looking game this is something you can raise up as it'll improve the general look of pretty much everything. Medium or high are good options here. Then post-processing quality. I'm not entirely too sure what this has to do with but it shouldn't have too much of an effect on the gameplay. It should be vignetting quality which is the dark sides around the screen, possibly lighting and things like that. Medium or high is probably good enough. You can leave it on ultra but you shouldn't notice too much of a performance difference. Then mirrors. I'd recommend having this set to high or ultra if you'd like to see out of them at all. Anything below this seems to be a bit blurry, but it is your preference here. If you find that you don't look in your mirrors pretty much at all, you can set this to medium or low and they won't really distract you at all. And not to mention, this option only really matters if you play from the perspective of being inside of the vehicle. Then skid marks. I'd recommend having this on track. Is the quality of the track slightly different to the ground cover up here, which will be foliage and things like that around you? Track more specifically has to do with the road beneath you. I'd recommend having this on the higher options as it should improve how the road texture looks, but you can drop this if you have a less VRAM in your system. Textures, this is completely VRAM dependent. Have this set to low. If you're running a four gig graphics card, anything below that, set it to ultra low. Anything between four and six gigs, set it to medium. Six gigs and above, set it to high. And finally, 8 gigs and above, VRAM set this to ultra. Then shaders adds a lot more depth to the scene and makes things look a lot better. I'd recommend having this on either high or possibly ultra where performance allows. Finally, motion blur. If you suffer from motion sickness, turn this off. Otherwise, leave this on as motion blur adds a ton of feeling to the speed of a racing game, including this one. With our options set here to pretty much the optimized higher end, should you need to lower any of these options, I'd recommend starting with probably ground cover and shadows, then trees as well, as you won't really notice too much of a difference in quality here, followed by car reflections, as you'll notice a large performance difference there, as well as mirrors if you play inside the vehicle, and probably shaders over here. If you're struggling with VRAM, you'll probably want to mess around with textures, track, and probably ground cover. Those are about the only options I'd really focus on here. For the most part, you'll want to push this game graphics-wise, as you don't need to hit anything above 60 FPS for the most part, as it is a racing game, and especially if you're playing with a controller. Finally, if you're a content creator, streamer, or YouTuber, head across to EA Music here and make sure you turn this to streamer, which should disable pretty much all of the music here. Yes, it'll be a bit boring, but at least you won't have any copywritten music playing on your stream. These ones down here are enabled, which I assume are all copyright free, which is great to have included. Personally, I don't record the sound of the game pretty much at all, so I'll definitely be leaving this on all or full. On the audio tab, there's not much we need to do here, except for possibly audio mastering. There's a few options here, and they're organized pretty weirdly. Essentially, these options all change the dynamic range of what you're hearing. As the 
on the difference between loud and soft sounds. I'd recommend if you have higher quality speakers or headphones, setting it to the home cinema option. Otherwise, headphones. The TV, soundbar, and especially night mode will all have more compressed dynamic ranges, meaning that loud sounds will have a very small difference in volume from quiet sounds. Home cinema will be the most immersive experience. We can also reduce bass here if you're sensitive to it, or of course you have crazy subwoofers. Everything else here is pretty much your preference and you can customize them as you see fit, especially voice chat for multiplayer, and that's really it. Also, I'd recommend having push to talk enabled unless you want all of your voice to go through to the internet pretty much unfiltered. Now that's pretty much it. We've customized all of the options here for the most part. The rest is just to play the game. Now, a quick note, this game does look a little bit flat, but daytime looks relatively good. I'll give you an example here. The intro screen looks pretty clean and heading into the actual track itself, things look pretty okay to say the most part. Even on ultra settings, this game doesn't look super 2023. I'd say it that way. Lighting could definitely be improved. That's probably one of the options here, even cranked all the way up to ultra. That's a bit lackluster. But anyways, for the most part, it's pretty good. Performance is also lacking at least somewhat if you leave everything cranked up to ultra, but dropping your settings, especially following what I showed you in this video, should result in a much smoother, better feeling game. Daytime racing feels pretty good, but at nighttime, there's some weird artifacts that happen with the road. I assume something to do with the texture and, and the lights in your vehicle, but anyways. As for trees popping in and foliage, it's a little bit noticeable, but less noticeable as you crank up the options. I'm currently sitting at a solid 60 FPS, if I pause the game, and enable a more advanced FPS counter, you'll see exactly what kind of performance I'm getting. With these options set to where they are now, it's very easy to hit a smooth 60 or 30 FPS, depending on the quality of your system. If I pause the game here, head into options, followed by advanced, if I were to raise trees and possibly dynamic objects, head back into the game, you'll notice a small improvement in the surrounding environment. And personally, things just look a little bit better. But as you can see, I'm now setting at a solid, well, 60 FPS, sometimes dropping to the upper 50s. Performance is really good. But if we head back and simply max everything out, which increases shadows, particles, weather, mirrors, and that's pretty much it, you'll usually notice a dramatic drop in performance. But currently, there's not too much of a difference other than maybe an increase in small stutters here and there. I'm setting at a solid 60 FPS, which is great to be hitting at 2K, but some maps I definitely drop my FPS way lower, whoops, into the mid to upper 40s, which is not the best to say the least. There's quite a bit more optimization that could be done on EA's side, especially around nighttime, as things just look really weird currently as they are. If we pause and head back to basic, then turn off DLSS entirely to be rendering at native resolution, you'll probably see more of a difference here. Yeah, so there's way more aliasing and weird things. Everything seems to be flashing, so you'll definitely need an advanced graphics, in basic graphics, anti-aliasing to be cranked to possibly epic or maybe even cinematic to smooth everything out to the same level it is with DLSS. It's a little bit blurry here. Maybe high should be good enough. Yeah, it's a little bit less blurry, but still, things could be improved a little bit. Personally, I much prefer the way that DLSS or FS looks compared to native rendering, even with all of the bells and whistles turned on. The game just feels a lot better to play. But anyways, that's really about it for the super quick guide. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.